G'day folks. I'm just having a look at this little pizza oven controller that got nuked uh, on 240 volts. It made quite a mess. Um, well thanks for all the input from my viewers. Uh, I've never really bothered repairing Surge Electronics but since this is a pretty expensive bit of equipment uh, it's worth a try. So a lot of people gave me some good input on testing it and also routing out any problems. Um, as you can see I've separated the main transformer which looks okay, I haven't put a meter across it but little wires going to the windings look okay so I'm gonna put a meter across that and I'm also looking at the traces and things, it looks like at the bottom of the bridge rectifier the, um, the pins are also blown out, it's blown the uh, copper traces away uh, that would explain why when it, was, when it was switched on with the proper 120 volts it didn't do anything so it's gone completely open circuit. Back of the board's fine, I've just got to clean it up. Uh, it's through hole with uh, traces on both sides and they're very poorly adhered to the board. Once you get a bit of heat into them they try and come off with the component. And that's using solder suckers and wick and whatever else I've tried. Just They're coming apart so I'd say it's a very cheap board and I'm going to have a fair bit of patching to do once I get the uh, main components reinstalled. Uh, it's going to be fairly tricky. Plus they seem to have used lead free solder. It takes forever to melt and it just doesn't flow so it's been an absolute nightmare getting the stuff off. I've actually had to re-tin it with um, regular lead solder several times before I could get some of these parts off like the transformer. You can see a lot of flux from my solder and that's just re-tinning and then, then uh, sucking it up and then re-tinning it again and so on and so on and eventually just heating the pins which we're still stuck just heating them and pulling it off. Um, Got to be fairly brutal with it to get the damn thing off but it's okay and the board seems to have survived. So I'm going to pull the uh, bridge rectifier off because that looks kind of nasty in there. I'm trying to get some light on it. Yeah. The very base of the rightmost pin and also the uh, AC input next to the uh, positive output there looks like those traces are completely gone so yeah at first I didn't think there were any traces gone but it seems like they're just ever so slightly blown out at the base of the component like the components arced out and then it's taken out the trace so I'd say that rectifier is dead but we'll see how we go okay well now all the soot's cleaned off there are actually no traces up there it's just that it's got um, proper conductive lined through holes so I did manage to get it off fairly easy. Luckily the pins on it are a lot smaller than the holes they're going through. Whereas on the transformer they're fairly close and it was easy to uh, damage that centre one there which luckily isn't connected to anything on that side. But I have to make sure this side here gets full solder. So I'm going to re-tin that and then reattach the uh, transformer. Likewise I've cleaned up some of the MOV holes but might have trouble with uh, D2 there. Because the uh, you can see where a trace is coming off it, and that is transferring power from the bottom side of the board to the top side, and I think that's where it went open circuit. Um, it just burned part of that trace away and then stopped. So with a bit of luck, this thing's all right. I'm gonna get the uh, multimeter onto this first before I go any further, because that would have bought, taken the full brunt of the. Uh, the power going into it but it does seem to be pretty good but yeah we'll see if that's all right first and then I'll uh, look at piecing the rest of this together now I'm gonna need some MOVs I don't have any in stock and that's gonna be the tricky bit I might have to order them in and it'll probably be about a week before then I know the customer wants in a couple of days and MOVs aren't the kind of thing you can just go down the street and buy so I might look at another 110 volt power supply that I've got and pillage the ones out of that. Because MOVs are designed to arrest power surges above normal. And for this it's normal power is 110, 120 volts. So 240 volt was read as a power surge and they blew up. If I put 240 volt ones on there it won't do crap in the event of a power surge. The board will die again except it will die worse. So MOVs are sort of a safety device they blow first and as you can see the center trace there goes to ground on the outside of the board 
so they go short and they go to ground but in this case the amount of amps and volts that it had just blew them to bits which is all right I mean it didn't start a fire or anything it didn't toast the transformer as far as I know but yeah interesting stuff it's interesting trying to re-repair something after somebody's popped it can't say I've ever done this before but I've intentionally popped a lot of boards you might notice that on some of my videos but trying to unpop one and put the magic smoke back in is an interesting challenge I'm quite enjoying this not that I'm going to go into repairing lightning damage or anything like that but some things you just gotta give it the good old try okay I figure I better see if this thing's gonna work again um, MOVs have been removed uh, being a surge arrestor they're not particularly necessary for bench testing I've already set this and tested it on 120 volts so plug it in this lead goes to the uh, device itself and we'll turn it on nothing's gone pop it's a good start all I can hear is the hum from the variac <laughs> I guess I better get the meter out and see what's going on in there okay well I think I've got it just right um, I've got 5 volt control through it which is correct um, the control voltage for all this stuff's 5 volts I don't know how intact the EEPROM or anything is but we're definitely getting secondary power and it's coming through regulated the regulators showing correct voltages which is a 5 volt reg that one there is for the speed control for the motor itself that was showing negative 82 volts and 0 volts so evidently once the controls connected and you start adjusting the speed it's going to vary the output um, even across the armature output to the uh, motor it uh, momentarily showed about 90 volts and then dropped back down again so there's probably a slight transient leakage voltage or something coming through uh, sitting unloaded with no motor or anything connected obviously it's going to read high until you connect something but it was showing good activity so yeah what else can I do? I'm going to put some uh, order or try and find some suitable MOVs. I don't have any that suit that size anyway. The ones I've got are giant, much bigger. So I'm going to try and get onto a component supply and that's sort of my question of the day is what's the best way to source these things because most of the stuff in Australia is 240 volt. Um, I'll check the component suppliers. I mean, are, I know voltage is input line average voltage is crucial but apart from that what else is important when ordering MOVs I mean what would be a drop-in replacement for this thing because the markings on those two that were blown up are completely illegible I can't make out any serious markings I tried googling the couple of digits I could find and well all you get is a couple of digits so uh, yeah that's my question of the day what the hell do you do oh I'll uh, leave it at that and of course I've still got it through the load, I've got it through 150 watt load which is heaps for this thing at the moment and the bulb's just not doing anything um, I guess I should try it on full straight to the uh, board but as I can see running through 150 watt ballast it's not really doing anything bad anywho thanks for watching